Hello friends of terrain building and welcome to another Middle Earth terrain building tutorial. Today I want to show you what techniques I used and how I built this house of Dale. You will see some steps you can take to build such a destroyed and ruined building and I would like also to show you how with basic steps a building or the ruin can also be designed so one can easily see what the original use of the house once was. I would like to show you this and hope you enjoy it. First I thought about how big I wanted to build the building and I decided on a floor plan of 17 centimeters by 12 centimeters. I cut it three blocks with this size and cut it one of them in half. I cut it a large layer of 17 centimeters from the XPS foam board and then cut it a block again and again after 12 centimeters. I cut it more blocks than I need for one house because I am building a second barracks for a good friend. This means that I can show different techniques. The basic idea is that this thinner block should indicate the basement and a staircase towards the front and then the front door at the top of the stairs. A full floor with 6 cm on top is then placed on top of this half floor. The other floors of the ruin are indicated, destroyed and glued with individual walls. The two floors are glued on top of each other in the next step and allowed to dry well. Then the texture roller is used to press the wall texture onto my XPS foam. I will do these steps after gluing so there isn't any unsightly transition after gluing and I report back when the stone texture is on the blocks. So I have now textured the walls. I'll give you the simple tip to use a solid back wall so that you do not slip off when structuring and unsightly results arise. This could be a wall, a stable cabinet or other stable smooth surfaces. The main thing is that the back cannot slip.
The first floor is finished so far. I added and structured the stairs and put a door with a frame around it. The goal is to break up the smooth wall and offer more variety. That's why I didn't put the windows inside the wall, but on the outside. I also added the start of two balconies and they will be finished on the second floor. In addition, 3D printed windows are attached. I will also show you a possibility of self-building the windows. Now comes the construction of the upper floor. For this, slices are cut, off the, cut out of the XPS block as walls, which have a thickness about 7, centi seven millimeters. Sorry, The thickness I like quite well. These are also textured, cut to size and glued on. Doors will go in the side walls, so the balconies would be accessible. The interior of the second floor will be designed with 3D printed bits. I'll show you the construction of this in time lapse. A few hours of construction later, the house now looks like this. I have built two more floors and indicated them. As you can see, the walls are glued and assembled individually. The top floor is not glued yet because the walls are to be plastered and to make it easier, the floor is not glued yet. You already know my glue for this from different videos. The glue paste is applied thinly. Otherwise, the windows and the railings on the balcony are still missing. I also think about whether I want to have roofs on the balcony. In addition, the roof the, or the house roof with a few indicated tiles is still missing. I cut my tiles using templates from Shifting Lands. I think they're really great. There are also a few different options and you just have to choose a design you like the most. You cut thin slices and can simply glue the bricks on. Apart from that, the next steps are the windows and the railings on the balcony. For the windows, I'll get, I'll get back to you separately in a moment. Since I am building the barracks twice, I can show once the option with printed windows and once with homemade windows. For the printed windows, I can put you a link down in the description below. If you don't have a printer yourself or don't want to have them printed, I genuinely want to show another do-it-yourself option right now. For this version, I cut it a block here. 
it has now the same size as the printed windows. Now I want to use this shape and burn these little holes in it and then cut thin layers of it. This process is of course a bit more work than printing the windows, but I also want to show you how to build them yourself. I have cut it four such slices and have pierced some holes with a dart tip. I will put the hot wire cutter through these holes and make the holes larger. I will do this directly with four discs on top of each other to save some time. I will use pins to attach the discs. That will be the next step and then I'll show you the result after that later. The house is pretty much finished. The fundamental steps are all done, but there are still some details missing. As you can see on the pins, the bricks are still drying. I will also break out some shingles from the roof to make it look more irregular and destroyed. After that, of course, the plaster is still missing and the upper floor is still therefore not yet glued. After the inside of the house must basically also be also be designed with different bits. These are the next steps that are yet to come. I will not show you the painting and plastering in time lapse. 
Also, at this stage, it is simply still the shell of a house and not necessarily very specialized yet. So in the coming, in the upcoming steps, I will use different 3D printed bits to make it clear that this is the barracks. It could also be used to build a tavern or an inn, for example. Outside in the courtyard, two training facilities should also be built. I have here a few 3D printed bits to bring more variety and life into the barracks. I have a few bunk beds, a table with chairs, a few barrels that just fit in everywhere quite well. In addition, many swords and spears to be placed in weapon racks. For training grounds outside, I have two training dummies and archery targets. I won't show you any of this in time lapse. The construction isn't exciting. However, these two terrain pieces will then serve as difficult terrain later. My barracks is finished and painted. Also the two additional small terrain pieces are finished. I didn't put plaster on the complete walls to break up a bit of the same color and create a more varied color style. I also glued some vines to add an, a natural touch. Inside you can see all the printed bits that first define the barracks to the former purpose. In the background on the wall you can see weapon stands and weapon racks. This, the table and chairs are also inside. This is now the finished barracks. Of course you can use the same shell of the building and give it a completely different meaning with other bits. At the end, I'll show you the finished terrain plate, terrain table, and with the different houses and different styles.